Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video, which comes from the TSEC 17 Super Vinyl between Leela and Stockfish. Today we are featuring an opening the King's Engine attack that was favoured by X World Champion Bobby Fisher. The game is a classic struggle between white pawns advancing on the king side and black pawns advancing on the queen side. And we're looking at particularly featuring on the game where Leela is white in this setup. Uh, so Leela is pushing all its pawns. Stockfish is pushing its pawns on the queen side and actually adopts an interesting defensive strategy um, and plays its knight into a5 rather than the more common knight d4. And we'll explain the advantages of each one. Uh, Leela's attack is gaining pace. And in the end, Stockfish decides to sacrifice a piece to stop that pressure. Uh, but Stock Stockfish manages to get six pawns for that piece. Uh, Leela is still attacking, though, and comes up with an interesting way of getting its queen into the game. Um, and in the end, uh, the game turns into a perpetual check. The Stockfish gives back the piece. Yeah, it's a thrilling game, a thrilling draw. So, um, uh, yeah, let's have a look at it. OK, let's have a look at this game. So the game started uh, e4, e6, d3, uh, which uh, introduces the King's Indian attack against the uh, the French, which um, um, actually has been one of my favourite openings with uh, uh, with white against the French um, all these uh, all these past years. And, and you've played it too, haven't you, Natasha? I certainly have. I've had some very interesting games in the King's Indian attack. Yeah, I've I've also played it uh, a lot in um, in training games against um, against Stockfish, and uh, I'm not sure. I think I've maybe I've maybe even won one, uh, which you know for me is quite remarkable. So um, had a lot of practice against Stockfish in these positions. Uh, the you, when you play Stockfish, do you play the very latest version of Stockfish? Well, um, normally I do it when I'm traveling. So I've got um, I've got it on my iPhone, um, which I think is still Stockfish uh, 11. It's a little program called Smallfish, so uh, that's uh, Stockfish ported to the iPhone. Um, but I mean, yeah, on my iPhone, um, I play, I think, 15 minutes plus 10. And uh, I mean, it, it really is way too strong for me. But in certain openings, I have, um, you know, I have better chances than others. And uh, and this opening um, is, is one of them. Um, and uh, the reason for it, I think, um, well, we'll have a look just at, uh, at how it goes. I mean, as you can see, White's uh, playing sort of a King's Indian setup here with the uh, the bishop on g2 and uh, um, and uh, the pawn going to e4. But the key thing is, uh, the key mark of the King's Indian attack is that you get this move uh, e4 to e5 in. Yeah, I would have thought the King's Indian attack would be quite a good one for neural nets because it's, it's more of a slow build up and you're pushing pawns rather than a sort of direct conflict between the forces. And so it's a, a sort of longer term attack. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I was expecting this to be a, um, a good opening for, uh, for, for Leela as well. Um, I mean, you've got this, uh, this pawn in the center on e5, uh, but there's no other central tension. So not that much is happening in the center. So yeah, as you said, I mean, it's a, a question of uh, who can mobilize their, uh, their attack on the wing better. Um, and um, in general, the, the, the neural nets play these types of positions uh, uh, better. Um, I mean, especially as well, because um, uh, Leela will be attacking on the king's side. Um, a very common plan is to play um, h4 to h5 to h6 even, um, knight f1 to h2 to g4, and really aim for those dark squares. I mean, Bobby Fischer played a, a few classic games uh, like that. And for black, it's not 100% clear. I mean, you're going to be doing something on the queen side. You're going to be pushing those queen side pawns. But you know, not 100% um, clear all the time how you're actually going to do that. I mean, I do find these positions easier to play for white than for uh, than for black. Um, so, um, so that was going to be quite uh, quite interesting. Um, knight to f1, so a very typical idea. Uh, just um, uh, that knight is going to come either through h2 to g4 or e3 to g4. 
And uh, well, here Stockfish played Bishop B7. Um, just worth uh, showing what Leela did as black because uh, that was radically different. Um, so Leela played A5. Uh, that's not too surprising, I think. Stockfish played H4. Yeah, Rook's pawns uh, in this opening uh, always, uh, you know, very, uh, very much involved. Um, and Stockfish played Knight E3 here. And uh, well, here Leela took the chance to play this move F6 and uh, and break in the center and get rid of this pawn on E5. I'm always slightly nervous about um, about doing this as black um, because that pawn on e6 is loose um, or a little bit backwards. If it advanced to e5, then your central light squares are a little bit weak. So I always do get a little bit worried about that. Um, it's a little bit like the video we did the other day where Leela did an early e6 break, which was also quite sort of double-edged, dangerous. So. Uh, trying to relieve pressure on its own system, but but also opened up the position. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's I think it's a it is a very typical NN thing. This uh, not to let the position settle, not to let uh, um, white in this case build up slowly, but really to try and um, and uh, and break that up. And actually, in the game, it was pretty successful. I mean, I think it's particularly um, well timed in this position because white's played knight e three. Um, and when with this knight on f6 now, this knight can't go to g4 anymore. So White's got to waste a little bit more time to get his pieces active. And um, um, uh, so in order to play knight g4. And uh, well, Stockfish played this plan of, uh, of d4, trying to clamp down on the uh, on the e5 square. And here Leela played a3. B takes a3, takes and rook a4. And um, yeah, a rather unusual King's Indian attack position, but uh, pretty decent for Black. I mean, Black's got... Uh, Targets on a3 and d4 to aim for. Um, pieces are quite active. King's reasonably safe, you know. So, uh, yeah, Leela had done a pretty good job here as black. And uh, well, the, yeah. game, the game ended as this a draw. Was the, this was the game where, this was the sort of other game of the two, because each each game in the Super Final, they play one white, one black. Exactly. And, yeah, so, so that was... Yeah, it looked quite nice, didn't it? Leela's approach for black. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was uh, that was pretty good, really. It's um, I mean, Stockfish played um, a move that's that's very very normal. Bishop b7. This has been played a lot. Um, h4, queen b6. Another um, uh, very normal move, just uh, linking up the rooks. And well, as we'll see, there's um, there's actually a specific strategy uh, idea behind this. Um, a4 now from uh, from Leela. And I find this a very strange move. Um, I mean, it, it's I, I've, I've virtually never seen it in this position. Um, normally what you say is, you know, you, you don't move pawns on the side where the opponent is attacking because that just creates targets and weaknesses. So from that point of view, a4 is a very strange move. Um, in actual fact, in my engine matches, uh, none of my engines uh, remotely considered uh, playing a4. You know, uh, I'm not quite sure what the um, what the idea is. Maybe, you know, Leela thinks, uh, you know, that um, uh, the structure as it becomes is easier to hold back than um, than just uh, letting letting uh, uh, black expand. I mean, I wonder, you know, B takes A4 even is quite interesting in this position. You know, you're opening up the queen side after all. But maybe Leela was thinking about playing Rook A4, you know, and maybe swinging over the Rook to the king side. I don't know. Never seen I this. when um, Leela was black, Leela wanted to play A5, A4, A3. Exactly. So maybe it wanted to stop stockfish doing that kind of plan yeah no it could could well be could well be yeah it's it's really uh, it's a very unusual move anyway and uh it completely shocked me when i saw it you kind of think that that now i don't know black can push those pawns more easily or, or or get a knight into b4 or some kind of thing um that a4 makes the queen side a bit looser yeah no it's true it's true it's um so anyway stockfish plays um play b4 so uh just uh um well, pushing the pawns. I mean, b3 is a possibility now. c4, obviously, I think is the big break that black will aim for. Um, bishop f4. And now a couple of mysterious moves from uh, from Stockfish that I don't really understand. Um, I don't think they're too useful, really. But um, um, but they're not they're not bad, bad, but they just feel a bit slow. So rook b8, knight e3, and then bishop a8. Um, I guess black is aiming for b4 to b3, maybe, but even that's not completely clear. And uh, it's quite nice, that knight coming to e3, isn't it? Because like sometimes in this King's Indian attack, you put your knight round to h2 and out that way, but e3 is more. 
central. Yeah. Um, and if, if black were to ever go d4, you've now got the... Because you've played a4, you've now got that c4 square. That's right. Yeah, I mean, this knight on e3 is, um, is, is, is quite nice. I mean, it restricts c5 to c4. Also, you know, you've got some ideas sometimes with knight takes d5 and e6. So, I mean, quite a few, um, yeah, quite a few ideas. You know, it's um, just this, this move, bishop, uh, rook b8, bishop a8, uh, I find it a little bit strange. I mean, I might have wanted to put my bishop on a6, for example, to support c5 to c4. But um, but anyway, Leela clamps down on uh, on any ideas of b4 to b3, um, and also c5 to c4 by playing uh, uh, by playing b3, and then this move rook c8, and this is a good a good idea. Um, the point is that after uh, that, Black's now going to play queen d8 and bring that queen back uh, to give defence to the king side. And uh, actually, I think um, Stockfish has done this against me before as well uh, in our training games, and um, it's a typical plan and it's a good one as well. So here, um, a very interesting moment again. Um, the normal way for, um, for White to try and proceed would be to play um, h5 to h6 and bring the knight into g4. But I mean, Black's got his queen um, back defending and uh, it's not 100% clear how, um, um, how White would proceed. Um, so Lila plays a very interesting plan. Actually, uh, um, I played a similar plan um, um, at Tromso in 2014 as white in, in the uh, in the match against uh, against Singapore. Um, and um, I, I just uh, again, I was struggling to uh, to find uh, a good way to proceed. And all of a sudden, I thought, oh well, I've never seen this one before, but it looks quite uh, quite interesting. And that's this just where you pushed your G pawn. Exactly. Your H -pawn. That's just to play G three to G four. I mean, actually, uh, I just um, I had a little. Thought, you know, you've even got to watch out with uh, with black for for these moves uh, uh, with a knight on e3, takes and uh, and e6, um, which is quite an interesting idea. Probably it's not so uh, it's not so great. I mean, you can probably just uh, play here and um, all of the black king side. Well, all the black pieces are somehow on the king side. It, it's not really that easy to exploit. Uh, but just just goes to show, you know, there's all sorts always all sorts of danger for black in these uh, king's Indian attack positions. But yeah, I, B8 ends up on freeze, doesn't it? When you when a you lot, play. yeah, yeah. That's why you sort of wonder again about this move. Uh, you know, rook B8, bishop A8. It just seems to be uh, creating a target somehow. But um, anyway, G4 happened, and uh, now a very interesting uh, point again. I mean, in general, you know, when when Black plays uh, this line, uh, then Knight D4 is the is the move that Black that wants to play. It's a little bit like an English opening, you know, you, where you play Knight D5. And then you want white to take the uh, uh, the knight on d4, and then that opens up the c file for counterplay. Um, but I was I was wondering a little bit, you know, what on earth was um, was uh, was Leela's idea in this position? Well, I put it on my uh, on my engine matches, so this was Fat Fritz this time against uh, Stockfish. And bizarrely enough, um, from this position, um, Fat Fritz was just going for an incredibly slow build up. So um, played knight g2, gave that pawn away on h4, no worries at all, and played this move rook e2, defending the pawn on c2. So um, black lines up a little bit. We play f4. We play knight e1 to cover the pawn on c2. Um, the rook comes to h2, and then you start to, 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 to see something. You start to think... Well, actually, I do wonder, you know, first of all, how can black proceed any further in this position? Because all he really has is a pawn on c2. There's no pawn breaks on the queen side. As long as I can cover this um, this pawn on c2, which I manage with this rook on h2 and knight on e1, then nothing's going to happen. And, well, that h pawn that, uh, that uh, black took, that's opened up the h file. And white can simply line up against the h7 pawn. And, well, it really is a slow build-up, isn't it? Those, the black pieces aren't aren't really achieving very much no it's it's an incredibly tedious build-up actually it's um but um amazingly enough in a, in a number of games it just seemed to work um you know this this is just uh this is very very dangerous now i mean the um the rooks um um fat fresh just just going to swap around uh rook and a queen and now h7 is uh is a big target and um well in the end, um, uh, Stockfish decided just to give up that pawn h7. Something nasty was happening, and uh, the whole position collapsed. Uh, and Fat Fritz won, you know, quite uh, quite convincingly afterwards. I, 
yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I'm not saying that this is, uh, you know, forced or uh, or uh, absolute best player or anything, but I did find it very striking, you know, and uh, there are a couple of things that, um, you know, clearly you do have to be careful about with um, uh, with this knight d4 plan. And that's really mainly that um, that you don't have any pawn breaks at all on the queen side. And, uh, you know, the fact that you win the, the h pawn is more or less irrelevant. So very, very interesting. Um, in actual fact, um, uh, Stockfish on the TCC hardware uh, played something that uh, certainly my hardware never did, um, which was to play this move knight a5, which I think is a very good move, just supporting c5 to c4. Um, keeps the pawn breaks in the position. Keeps the pawn breaks in the position. I mean, it still looks very, very narrow, but uh, as you're going to see, Stockfish is also going to exploit the drawback to having played this uh, a4 move which is that the pawn on b3 is quite weak. So Leela keeps on going, g5. The storm clouds are gathering on the king side. Uh, d4, that's to stop um, a black knight coming to c5 and attacking b3. Takes, takes. Rook c3, rook b1. Everything seems to be covered, but now this important move, bishop c6. So bishop c6 um, has the big threat of playing knight takes b3. And after rook takes b3, bishop takes a4, pinning the rook to the uh, to the queen. And um, um, actually, it's, in, it's virtually impossible to stop. Um, so it essentially means that black is, you know, breaking through on the queen side. Black is going to get a couple of pawns there. So, well... Because if you try and stop it with knight d2, then black has queen b6 targeting your d4 pawn. Exactly, exactly. You know, very, very, uh, very, very irritating, this one. So Leela decides that it's um, really time to uh, to go all in and plays knight g4. Yeah, so what does black do? Well, black plays um, um, a defensive move here. Um, we're going to see why that's uh, so important. It played uh, this move rook b7. Um, um, I won't explain it now, but we'll uh, we'll see very clearly later why that's um, um, a good defensive move. Just before Black uh, starts chipping away at the um, at the White Queen side, King H2. Uh, what's that move doing? Well, that's actually freeing the G file for the Rook. So Rook G1 is going to come in uh, soon. And here we are. The fireworks start. Knight B3 and Knight F6 check. So Stockfish here has to decide. Yeah, what? how it's going to take on f6. Um, g takes f6 is uh, looks very, very dangerous after g takes f6, especially with the rook coming to g1 with uh, with check. So Stockfish decides you know, not to um, um, not to uh, open up its king, but to keep its pawn cover and place this move bishop takes f6. And uh, after g takes f6, played g6. Ah, sorry, played bishop takes a4, first of all. Some uh, nasty little threats there. Um, for, um, uh, discovered attack, knight c5 is uh, is one. Knight takes d4 is also possible at some times. Rook g1, making an even bigger threat. Rook takes g7. And the stockfish played uh, g6. So, well, what's the situation? Um, obviously, white's made a lot of progress on the king side here. Um, but, um, well, black has got two... Uh, pawns on the queen side broken through and well this threat of knight c5 is still quite annoying and it's not completely clear how uh, how white's breaking breaking through can add more pressure onto the king side but um but um it's not going to happen you know next move anyway that you're uh, you're giving mate but that's what uh Leela did anyway knight g5 and well this does look quite uh quite tempting i mean knight takes c6 is coming in there um, maybe h5, maybe even ideas like queen h5 with uh, with uh, a queen sacrifice to open up the g-file. All very, very dangerous. Bishop takes e6 is also a big threat. So here um, Stockfish demonstrates the point of this move, rook b7, that I pointed out uh, um, a few moves earlier. It plays knight takes f6, e takes f6, and queen takes f6. So Stockfish has given back the piece. And there isn't at least a rook on b8 to be taken by that bishop. Exactly. I mean, this um, moving the rook off that uh, diagonal um, means that, I mean, first of all, it's a good defensive uh, point. I mean, it's um, it's uh, defending the pawn on f7. But it also means that the bishop isn't actually going to take it. And so black was able here to sacrifice a piece and uh, in order to break up the white attack. 
And yeah, so far it's four pawns for the piece. Exactly, exactly. And uh, well, I mean the uh, the d4 pawn is hanging as well. So you know, there's um, yeah, I mean, uh, and also without those pawns, you know, Lila's attack looks much less uh, impressive. So Lila chucks in a, another couple of pawns. Bishop e5, Queen takes f2 check, Rook g2, and Queen takes h4. So um, we're oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns against one pawn. It's six pawns for the piece. Exactly. Quite. Uh, and, uh, and, and as Matthew was saying, that White's attack looks less ferocious without the pawns. There's this shogi proverb. Um, it says, there is no attack without pawns. Exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, actually, funnily enough, um, I read a, a chess book recently and uh, somebody, uh, um, uh, oh, it was the British Grandmaster Neil MacDonald uh, in one of his books, he said uh, that there's um, no plan without a pawn break, you know, which is, uh, again, I, I thought was, uh, you know, a, a nice echo of that, um, of that uh, age old uh, shogi proverb. Um, but yeah, it's not easy for White to make progress. So White, White played Rook G4 um, and actually offered a, a repetition here. So queen h4, rook g4. I don't know whether Leela would have um, um, avoided the repetition if um, if Stockfish had played queen f2, but Stockfish was having none of it anyway and played queen h6. Um, yeah, and I mean White's got to find got to find some way of uh, of getting an attack here because uh, uh, well you see now the rook on c3 and queen on h6 they're attacking that bishop on h3. Um, there's likely going to be some, even some danger on, against the White King uh, very soon if uh, if uh, Lila doesn't get something going. But uh, Lila found this great idea for um, for activating its queen. Um, it played queen f1, threatening uh, queen f6, uh, um, and then queen h8 mate. It's a very dangerous threat. F5, breaking that up. Now, queen a6. Indeed. Forking everything. Forking everything, indeed. Forking the bishop on a4, the uh, the rook on b7, and the pawn on e6. Um, and, um, um, yeah, I mean, black can't, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, black can't really just um, uh, uh, just move the rook away. I mean, that's just, there's just too many threats. There's just too many threats uh, in there. So Stockfish took the opportunity here now to force a draw by Perpetual. Played rook h3, check, which um, actually also pulls the knight back away from an attacking uh, position and played f takes g4. Leela took the uh, uh, the rook on b7 and Stockfish played queen h3 check. And after king g1, queen e3, king g2, queen e2, the game ended in a perpetual check. So there we are. I hope you uh, um, you enjoy that game. That's um, I found it you know, very, very interesting. Um, in particular, this, um, this, you know, contrast in the build-up. I love these uh, attacks on both wings where, you know, one side's attacking on the king's side and the other side's attacking on the queen's side. And uh, really, I mean, Stockfish did a, did a very good job here. Um, those moves, rook b8 and, uh, and bishop to a8 were, were a little bit strange in the opening. But um, but it still had enough time to uh, to play its attack here. And this, uh, this plan of knight a5 and then this rook c3, bishop c6 was very very nice indeed and uh yeah I, I mean also the um the plan of um um of um giving up the um the piece like this you know some very far sighted tactics there with rook b seven you know just in order to see that um uh that you can give up a piece you know this is uh you know six or seven moves later uh, in order to defend you know very very nice defense from uh, from stockfish there. So there we are. I mean, I hope you enjoyed that uh, that game. I mean, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel. Now's the time. Please subscribe. There's no better time. And uh, that also applies to our book, Game Changer. If you haven't read it. Great read. Uh, now's the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But in any case, you know, keep safe, keep well and keep on watching. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching.